the very high speed and for that particular case because it is of the same frequency it will just be having a single color so it will depend upon the device itself some other lasers can be of a red color some other lasers can be of another different color but they should be having the same color because they are the photons of the same wavelength they are of the same wavelength that is how the laser can just be produced uh, by having looked from the the innermost behavior of an electrons crossing from the ground state to an excited state coming back to the metastable state and whenever such kind of excitation process had been had been created we could just be able to see some production of many more photons as it begins from the from the one at one photon producing two photons four two photons producing four photons four photons producing eight photons eight goes to 16 goes to 32 goes to 64 goes to 100 and 28 etc etc so we'll be able to find that in such a very in such a, in such a process or what we call a stimulated that particular process is really what we call stimulated emission and really that is how we could just be able to get many many more photons produced within the same device just like an optical resonator and that particular photon photons whenever they all together move away you'll be able to find that they are really very strong very energetic and they can be able to move with a very long distance with a very little attenuation with a very little uh, scattering and we shall just be able to see later even the properties of this particular uh, of of the laser which can just be produced uh, in this way okay so let us uh, let us look now the requirements that are needed for the production of laser there are three requirements which are really needed for the production of laser first of all we really need to have uh, requirements first of all requirements of production first of all we really need to have a, a metastable a metastable state within the configuration we really need to have such kind of a metastable state whereby those electrons whenever they go to an excited state whenever they are jumping back to the metastable state they could be able to produce photons and uh, due to a stimulation of those many more electrons coming back to the to the metastable state then we are just going to have many more photons to be produced we also need to have a uh, population invasion population inversion population inversion means that we need to have some many more electrons to uh, to a high energy level than at the lower energy level just like those electrons which will be able to come to a metastable state should be more than the ones which are really uh, than are the ones which are really to the ground state so that is the population inversion for the purpose of having many more electrons whenever they are excited to go up to an excited state and whenever they come back to a metastable state they'll be able to release some more photons and uh, the third condition uh, it means that we should have the requirement for the production of a laser it means that that particular laser which is just going to be produced it should be it should be coherent and uh, should be coherent and should be uh, monochromatic it means that it should be of the same frequency that it should be mono monochromatic uh, mon monochromatic and coherent uh, that particular that particular photons which are just going to be produced they, they should be of the same frequency and for that particular case the actual the actual stimulated emitted light will be of the same frequency and that is what we call a laser the light amplification of a stimulated emission of radiation which will just be uh, which will just be produced so these these are the requirements okay students let us go and look the properties of lasers
there are three properties of lasers. Uh, the first one, uh, we are saying that the laser light should be collimated. Collimated means what? Means that those particular photons which are just going to be produced, they should be really moving together. Uh, moving together, existing together, as long as they are of the same frequency and uh, uh, they are of the same frequency, the way they have just been produced, they will be like to be almost all together. And even the divergence, the divergence uh, of that particular uh, of that particular light as it as it travels is really is almost nil, very 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 small or almost nil. And that's why that light can be able to travel over a very long distance with a very small, uh, with a very small divergence. So that is collimated, and it makes the whole beam really to be very strong, very intense, very strong, moving along a very narrow path with a very little uh, scattering. That is the very first property of laser. The second one, the second property, was saying that a laser light should be monochromatic should be monochromatic monochromatic means that the photon which is the switch is being, which is produced is of the same frequency is of the same frequency and now as long as we are using let's say atoms of the same uh, of the same element very specifically those particular uh, very specifically those particular photons as they are moving from an existing state to a metastable state, you will just be able to find that they will be producing the uh, they will be producing uh, photons of the same frequency, and that is what we call uh, monochromatic. And they should be coherent. The third property they should be coherent, meaning that those photons, because are just like wave-like, they should be in phase to each other so that they are all in phase as they are moving. The way they are being produced and the way they are moving, they should just be in phase, so they are coherent. So really, here we are talking about the frequency of the photon produced, and the way they are moving, they should just be coherent because they should just be in phase. So these are the properties of the lasers. Okay, so students, as we have already looked at the properties of the lasers, these are just three. That first of as I've already said that they should be collimated and monochromatic and coherent. And you can just be able to see that these lasers, whenever they are just being produced, they are really very strong. Within a very small microscopic region, the intensity of the laser which is being produced, it is of a very high temperature. To sometimes it might go to a temperature which is really greater than the temperature of the sun which is of about 6,000 degrees of a Kelvin. So, so you can just be able to think about that kind of a laser which is going to be produced, that it can be able to, it can be used for various purposes of even destroying very big things, very big machines, as we shall be able to see whenever we're just going to look onto the applications of lasers. Okay, now let us go and look now types of lasers. The types of lasers. So we are having four types of lasers. Uh, we are having four types of lasers. The first one is uh, the first one is what we call uh, the solid state. Laser. The solid state uh, laser. Uh, this is the first one, and uh, the second one is what we call uh, the gas laser, and the third one is what we call the liquid laser, and uh, the last one is what we call. Uh, a semiconductor a semiconductor laser let's let us just start by looking at the solid state laser the solid state laser these are just the normal lasers 
Okay, so we just found that uh, into a solid state laser, here we are having some particular elements, uh, what we call the dopants. And these are the elements such that whenever they are being, uh, they are being treated in the way of which it's just beyond your level, like the, like the, the serbium, erbium, uh, and terbium, uh, we'll just be able to find that these are just few few elements that whenever they are just being treated they could just be able to produce the laser and uh, these are what we call the dopants you could just be able to remember whenever we are talking about the doping process into the semiconductor so these are the dopants which can really be used and be treated to produce a laser and that is that laser is what we call the solid state laser whenever we go to the gas laser to a gas laser, then you are having a gas in a container, and uh, the the the, dis, the discharge the, the discharge tube and uh, uh, the, the, that particular gas which will just be electrically discharged will eventually just be able to produce a laser, and that laser, as long as it is produced from the gas which is had been contained in a certain de special device, then that is what we call a gas laser. We are going to have a liquid laser. Liquid laser is a laser which is produced from the medium of a liquid. So through, 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 that, through a certain process, a treatment of that particular liquid, whenever it's being, uh, it's being activated, we could just be able to find that such a stimulated emission could just be achieved within such a liquid medium and uh, we could be able to produce a laser as well. And that's why that's we're going to have what we call a liquid laser. And the semiconductor laser. For the semiconductor laser, then here we are using the semiconductor uh, materials. Semiconductor materials at which whenever they are just being, uh, whenever they are being treated, uh, they, whenever they are just being treated, they could just be able to produce the, what we call the semiconductor laser. So these are the types of lasers uh, so far we could just be able to discuss. And uh, after that, we could now just be able to go and look onto the uses of the lasers. This will be uh, our last part. We will be able to use, look the uses of lasers. Okay, students, now let us go and look onto the uses of lasers. As I've, just as I've been given you an introduction, we'll just be able to find that lasers have got so many applications in science and in technology. And that's why uh, with that new technology, really these lasers have been found to be used at different areas. It can be used in medicine, it can be used in military, it can be used in in industry, it can be used uh, in making films, it can be used in various areas. And we shall just be able to look those sensitive and very important areas where these lasers can just be used. The very first part, we can just be able to see uh, that lasers can be used in medicine. In medicine. We will just be able to find that the lasers uh, can just be used, let's say, in uh, in a treatment. For example, it can just the lasers can be used, let's say, can just be used to remove some tumors developed to a patient uh, without without a patient having an operation. So that particular tumors can just be removed. And some delicate operation, like an operation of an eye, lasers can just be used. Very comfortably, a patient can be treated having such kind or such kind of uh, such kind of uh, such kind of a treatment without even having a scar, or even losing a blood, or even or even having any particular problem because it's just a laser which can just be directed to a particular position uh, or to a particular area where a tumor is supposed to be removed or being or the cells being killed or whatever and 
a patient can just be treated in this way. That is in medicines. And uh, we could be able to find that uh, lasers can as well be used in industries. In industries. As I've already said that, the lasers are really very strong. Very strong rays, very energetic in such a way that they could even be used to cut, to have a precision cut or a precision making some very tiny holes to a very strong uh, metallic ions, uh, very in a precision at which no any, other, no any other device that can just be able to make it such having, such, such having a very big precision cutting. And that is for the industries. And there are a lot of application of lasers in industries, uh, just like in, ro in robots or whatever. But really, this, this will just be, uh, this is not at your level where you can be able to see it. But really, there are so many applications. But, but, as, but as the lasers itself, as you can be able to see, it can be used in this way. And it can be able, it can be used, let's say, even in the military. can be used in the military. In the military we are having, uh, we are having some, uh, we know from the properties of the lasers, having a, an ability of moving over a very long distance without, ha with, with, with a very small uh, scattering or small attenuation, you will be able to find that they could just be used to guide some missiles. That's why we are having the laser guided missiles. The missiles that whenever they are being fired, they could be guided by a laser to a target. And therefore, the, therefore, the target, actually the target uh, aimed by such a missile will be hit perfectly correct without any problem with the help of lasers. And, uh, and this is really, and, and this is just one application in the military. There are so many applications that they can, can be used even to destroy some other, uh, some other, some other, let's say, enemy, uh, enemy devices that are coming to you or whatever because the lasers are just as strong as I've already said that they are more energetic and very stronger and they could just be able to destroy even bigger machines or whatever. And that is for the military use. We could also be able to find that uh, the lasers can as well be used, let's say, in films, in making films. They can be used in making films. Uh, one of the advantage of a laser is to be able to create a three-dimensional figure. You can be able to create a three-dimensional figure. So it means that if you look at an object, you could be able to see in all of the three directions, the X, Y, and Z direction. So you could be able to build up a diagram which could be observed into three directions. And uh, with the help of the lasers, you could be able to make some good films, uh, good films just like, uh, just like those uh, film, co uh, film companies that are really used to make some cartoons or whatever into a three-dimensional like the, uh, there are several companies, okay? We could just be able to mention just like the, the Walt Disney uh, and some other companies. They are really making good films, good cartoons, which could be viewed into a three-dimensional. Uh, that is one of the, one of the, uh, one of the advantage that the, that's one of the advantage for the lasers. So this is actually, we, is what we call the hologram. This is what we call the hologram. That is the fourth, ad, uh, fourth use of the lasers. We could be able to find that some other uses of the lasers uh, in, in printing, in the printing industries. Lasers are used. To make perfect printing, lasers are used. And we could just be able to see that uh, in the printing industries or in, uh, in, uh, in just like in the photo photocopiers, in photocopiers, yeah, they are using they are using some lasers, uh, just like uh, the photocopiers. There are uh, there are laser laser photocopiers or laser printers or whatever. So in an uh, in an industry of printing, the uh, lasers are just used. There are uh, so many areas where the lasers can just be used. 
there are so many areas where the lasers can just be used. Another area is uh, in optical, what we call, uh, in what we call the optical discs. Optical discs, just like, uh, just like the CD, the compact disc, uh, the compact disc read-only memory, and uh, the DVD. Digital versatile discs. These read only memory. These are the discs whereby the lasers, once they are being put into DVD machine or whatever, there are some laser of a particular strength which could be able to scan around the grooves of a disc and decode or take that information and relay it to an amplifier and the amplifier could be able to play back, whether it's a data or whether it's a music or whatever. And that is what we call, uh, and that's where we could be able to see some lasers can just be used in those particular uh, devices, just like the DVD player or the or the 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 DVD player or some other devices. And we could as well have some other uses of the lasers, uh, like uh, like in 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 supermarkets, supermarkets or in shops. All of, all, of the all of the items which are sold there, they have got some barcodes. They have got some barcodes. And if you look at the barcodes, just like this, the barcodes which are here. If you look at any particular device which is sold to any particular market, they have got some barcodes. Now, there are some sensors to a shopkeeper. Once he just move across the barcode, that particular barcode could be relayed, that particular barcode could be relayed to, I mean, could just be relayed to, uh, uh, with the help of the laser, could just be able to pick the, the decoded barcode to an information that is stored to a computer. And the computer can be able to relay back this information to a server, and the server could be able to, to identify such kind of an item and even the price. So a shopkeeper has, has a shopkeeper needs he, he 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 or she doesn't need to remember the prices of all of the items which are kept there in the shop so if you buy any particular so many items the shopkeeper will just be able to identify the barcodes use the scanner which uses a laser he, he or she could just be able to, uh, to 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 move around the barcode and uh, that particular information could be related to a computer to a server and then finally, the total amount of the price you are supposed to pay could just be relayed back into a computer. So the barcodes, uh, the barcodes that uh, are just very helpful, let's say, uh, to fasten or to speed up this, uh, to to speed up uh, or to help those the shopkeepers whenever uh, the customers are coming there to buy some items. There are various areas where we could just be able to see. Uh, lasers are being used. We could be able to have some other uses, like what we call the photonics, whereby it's a combination of the it's a combination of the optic fiber, and uh, the optic fiber sometimes can just be used uh, along with the lasers to transfer a message from one position to another. Now the technology of a combination where the uh, whereby the the optic fiber are used in a combination with the lasers, and then, then this is what we call the photonics, where we are going to have a combination uh, of such kind of a technology of using the the optic fibers uh, with uh, with the lasers to transfer for an information from one part to another, and that's what we call the photonics. So there are various areas whereby. Uh, Various areas whereby the lasers can just be used. Okay, we are having we are having these uses of the lasers. Uh, another use of the laser, we could be able to find that the lasers can be used in surveying. In surveying, those uh, those who are surveyors, whenever they just want. To, 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 to look, let's say, to determine, let's say, an area of a particular location. Really, they are just putting some beacons or some posts at some particular corners. 
locate to the location of which they need just to determine the area and uh, now the, 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 there is a particular machine throw th that which is really which is really a surveyor has just to trigger a laser be able to communicate to th to some other posts if that is the post a and that is post b and the one is here now a device is going to have can be able to communicate with a post which is kept there at point a with a, and can be able to communicate with the post which is kept at point b and finally and finally this man here a surveyor could be able to know the actual area uh, the actual area which is uh, which is really a triangle it's not necessarily to be a triangle sometimes it could just be a rectangle or a triangle yes, this is a triangle it can just sometimes be of a four angle or some more so as long as there are some posts located at that particular position using the you i mean using that particular surveying device uh, producing some lasers the lasers could be able to communicate with that particular post and finally an area an intended area uh, located located with that particular post will just be determined so straight there are several applications but these are just a few for you to understand uh, how and where the lasers can just be used in our daily life okay students now let's go and uh, look for the questions i've just prepared for you my the first question goes like this briefly explain how does laser light differ from the normal light briefly explain how does the laser light differ from the normal light so this is just a, a simple a very short question and it's simple uh, we really need to see the difference. We need to see the difference between a laser light uh, and a normal light. So you could just be able to answer this question the way you'd like. But really you need to show the difference between the normal light and the laser light. So if I could be able to, to take here about a laser light uh, and here to be the normal light. First of all, as what I've already said previously, that the laser light, the laser light, it is a light having the same frequency because as I've already said, it, it's being produced by, uh, by stimulated emission of electrons. And those electrons, they are produced to be of the same frequency. So the laser light, it is of the same frequency. Same frequency. But for the normal light, the normal light, it is a mixture of different colors. Each color has got its own frequency and wavelength. Okay? So for the normal light here, uh, the normal light, have, uh, it is a combination of various colors of different frequencies. So here we could be able to say, here it is a combination, it's a combination uh, of various uh, colors various colors uh, of different of different frequencies of different frequencies so this is for the normal light and uh, and if we are having a light to be of the same frequency it should be unique it means that it should be of the same color so here it should be the laser light should be having uh, the same color while the normal light this is a white light the normal light is a white light okay and that's why if and that's why if you take here to be your prism and you inject a normal light there the light will just be able to undergo some uh, the red color uh, to that particular part uh, the orange yellow green uh, indigo uh, sorry blue indigo 
and uh, the violet goes to the bottom part. So you can be able to see that these colors, once they are being combined together, they bring about the white light, which is the normal light. But if, if I could be using a laser light, then there is no such kind of there is no such kind of formation of these colors. If it could be a, if it could be a laser light coming this way, you will just be having the laser light just be just a single light. Uh, if it is if it is a red, you will ha be having a red there because a red color it is a a, a, a light of a, of the same frequency of the same wavelength. And there is no way we can be able to have some dispersion of a single colored light, just like a laser. And uh, we are having the laser light to be, uh, the laser light also, it is in phase. It is in phase. Mm. But for the normal light, normal light sometimes is not in phase. Uh, for the normal light sometimes is not in phase. It can be mixed. It sometimes can be in phase, sometimes cannot be in phase. Is not in phase. Mm. And we are having some more properties for the laser light. And the laser light, we just found that it is uh, collimated. That is the production of the f the production of the photons which are just going to be produced. They are all together, moving together in a phase, very strong, energetic, in the same straight line over a very long distance. And uh, here, uh, it's not col col not collimated. Uh, there are so many differences. There are so many differences as you are comparing the laser light and the normal light. We could be able to talk about even the distance. Uh, there is a very big attenuation for the normal light, that the light could just be able to travel a very short distance, and after that you won't be able to see anything. But for the laser light, it can be able to travel a very long distance, and that's why it can be even, be even used, let's say, for the communication of some satellites, because it can be able to travel a, over a very long distance with a literal attenuation. And here we can be talking about attenuation, uh, have literal, have literal attenuation, meaning that spreading over, uh, but this have large. Large attenuation. Mm. These are just a few differences between the normal light and uh, the laser light that is for the question number one let's go to question number two the question number two how is it possible to create a laser beam strong enough to use as a weapon to destroy heavy machine okay so let's go let's look at our question number two that is the question number two says that uh, how is it possible to create a laser beam strong enough to use as a weapon to destroy heavy machine? Here is just a normal explanation. As we've already said previously, that the laser light, the stimulated emission where we could be able to produce a laser light could just be done in a way that if such kind of, st of stimulated emission can really go on for some several time, as I've already said that we could be able to produce a laser light which could be of very intense, very strong, even to a temperature which could go even beyond the temperature of the sun, about 6,000 degrees over centigrade. Now just, just imagine we are having a laser of that particular temperature. What does it mean? It means that, what, it means that a laser by itself can even be able to can even be able to drill a very big metallic material or can even be able to kill something or to destroy something. And that's why in our today's technology, even in the military, those lasers can as well be used, let's say, to destroy some heavy machines or can be used to destroy an enemy machine. 
so it can be used as a weapon as well. So that's how we could say that it is very possible to create a laser beam to be stronger enough as a weapon which could just be able to destroy some heavy machine. Okay, that is, uh, that's our question number two. So students, uh, let me, I, I, I believe there are a lot of questions which we could just be able to do it. But I'm taking to you one question for you as a homework. Uh, and this question says, explain the difference between surgical laser and communication laser. Surgical laser and communication laser. Briefly, I could be able to say to you, you should have to know about the surgical laser are those lasers which are used in hospitals for operation or for some other medical, medical use. Communication laser are those lasers which are used for communication purposes. It can be either satellite communication or from one post to another as for the surveyors, as I've already said, for my last application there of laser. That is for communication purposes. And uh, so you need now just to see the difference and uh, look, for those two, look for those basic differences and just be able to write them. And that will just be the answer and take this as the homework for you. Okay, students, uh, I do hope that whatever we have just done here, you are now be able to know what is laser, how it can be produced, how, what are the types of 